and welcome to GameSec. As you probably already guessed, we are talking about the Retro Duo Portable for this episode. How could they guess that? I mean, unless they just saw it in your hand and... No, they probably uh, guessed by reading the title wherever. Oh, it's yeah, that would make sense there, I think, now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, quite an interesting little thing here. This is just... Yeah, it is. It's, it's you know, play Super Nintendo and regular Nintendo games. And Game Boy Advance games. Well, well if you have the adapter. Yeah, with the adapter. Um, and uh, Genesis games, if you have the adapter. Yes. But since there's two of us, we figured there'd be two reviews. Mm -hmm. And as always, because I'm the best of the duo, um, I am going to go first. And there's nothing you can uh, do about it. Well, we'll save the best for last like we always do. <laughs> Okay. All then. three people who like you, Joe, will be happy that you're going first. <laughs> okay, let, let's see what I think of the Retro Duo Portable version 2.0. The Retro Duo Portable 2.0 by RetroBit Core Edition. This handheld retails for $89.99 and it plays Super Nintendo cartridges. So far, it seems to work with everything I've thrown at it from Turtles 4 to even Star Fox. Overall, the emulation quality is pretty good. The screen looks good, but it seems to be just composite video quality. Still, all of the text is definitely readable. The sound is decently emulated from what I can hear, and I didn't notice much of a difference between this and my real Super NES. But the speakers on the unit are really tinny, and they don't sound good at all. However, if you put on headphones, the sound quality is much improved, and it's even in stereo. There is a slight 60 Hz buzz, though. Holding the unit itself can take a bit of getting used to. The on-off switch nests right into your palm, and for some reason the L and R buttons are in front of the cartridge, and to me, I think it would be better if they were back behind the cart instead. And if you've got a Super Game Boy, yes, you can use it here to play your Game Boy games. Oh yeah, and it can play Super Famicom games as well, that's, that's always pretty cool. What's nice is that you can hook the unit up to a TV with the included AV cables. Composite video only. Here's how it all looks and sounds on screen. And here's how the same game looks and sounds on a real Super Nintendo NES video. Included is an adapter that lets you use regular Super Nintendo controllers for one or two players. You can also get a controller pack which comes with two controllers for 12 bucks. Also included is a giant adapter that lets you play NES games on the Retro Duo Portable. The games look and play good for the most part, but the sound quality isn't very accurate. Most of the NES games I tried just sounded kind of wrong. Some games, like Castlevania 3, don't even work once you get past the title screen. I really don't think NES games were meant to be portable. I mean, come on, if they were, Nintendo would have made the cartridges smaller than a freaking aircraft carrier. Sold separately are adapters which let you play Sega Genesis or Game Boy Advance games on the unit. You know, just in case your Game Boy Advance is a little bit too portable. Anyway, the Super Retro Advance adapter, which retails for $45, plays Game Boy Advance games, and it seems to do it really well. The image looks good on screen, except for that composite video quality. Yeah, I know, I'm a composite snob. The adapter even has that link jack so you can trade Pokemon stuff or whatever it is you Game Boy people do with it. Unfortunately, it won't play your Game Boy or Game Boy Color games. But even more impressive is the Retro Gen adapter to play Genesis games, which is only 25 bucks. You know, I'm really surprised at how good this thing is. So far, it plays every game I've thrown at it except for Virtua Racing, and that one contains a special chip. Yes, you can play Sonic 3 and Knuckles on it. You know, I wonder how good the emulation really is, though. I know, let's plug in the power base converter and try a Master System game. Let's see, will it work? Yes, it works! It does work! You can play Master System games on the Retro Duo Portable. And it couldn't be more comfortable or more portable! You'll be the coolest kid on the bus for sure! And while the 3D games run and the glasses activate, the screen itself is too blurry to make out any 3D image at all. See? Oh, well, OutRun 3D here has a few weird graphical glitches, but Poseidon Wars 3D doesn't. Still, 3D just isn't possible on this screen. So, do 32X games work? No. They can't, because the 32X requires RGB input from the Genesis, which a Retro Duo simply can't provide. But it works as a pass-through for regular carts if you have the 32X power plugged in. So you're sure to enjoy the tower of power on your Retro Duo Portable with the Retro Gen adapter, 32X, and a Game Genie for cheat codes while playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles! This is as comfortable as holding the balls of God, and is great for forearm exercises. And yes, this setup really works, no joke. 
Oh, and the Super Retro Advance Portable Adapter can be used on your Super Nintendo to play Game Boy Advance games on your TV screen. Same goes with the Retro Gen Adapter. You don't even need a Retro Duo Portable to use these, if you don't want one. Both of these require an included AV cable, which plugs into the side of the adapter because the Super Nintendo doesn't have a video pass-through. In both cases, you get composite video and stereo audio. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this is how a Game Boy Advance game looks while playing it on the Super Nintendo. The Retro Gen is even better because now you can play your favorite Master System cartridges, cards, or even 3D games on your SNES. That's right, the 3D does work with this setup just as long as you're plugged into a CRT TV. Light Phaser games don't work, unfortunately, mainly because there's nowhere to plug in the gun. Oh well. Oh yeah, and it can play Genesis games too. It's kind of weird the way it maps out the Genesis buttons on the Super Nintendo controller, but I guess, you know, what else are they gonna do? Here's what all of this looks like on screen. This is the amazing Castle of Illusion on the Retro Gen plugged into a Super Nintendo. Now here's Castle of Illusion on a real Genesis, which was modified for S-Video. Oh, and now here's Rastan for the Master System on the Retro Gen Adapter. Everyone loves Rastan, right? Well, they should. And here it is on a real Master System. Honestly, I'm surprised the Retro Gen Adapter is actually able to emulate as well as it does. It's pretty impressive. Overall, the adapters get a big thumbs up from me. I'm not really big into portable gaming, so the Retro Duo Portable itself, yeah, I could take it or leave it. And there you go, those are my opinions of the Retro Duo Portable, which plays Super Nintendo and Nintendo games. Yes, and there are fairly valid points that you made there. So. Fairly valid, yeah. I mean, come on. Anyways, well, now that I'm holding the system, I'm gonna talk about it. Yeah, and, you have uh, to be holding the system to talk about so it. So get cozy, grab yourself a nice hot chocolate or something. And I'm sit just back and relax. gonna go to sleep for a while. But... Okay, hit pause. <laughs> See what you have to say. So this is the Retro Duo Portable. They call it the Duo since it can play Super Nintendo and regular Nintendo games straight out of the box. Anyways, as with any console or handheld release these days, it has its fair share of things that are great and things that are not great. Let's start with a not so great and then we can end this on a good note. The first time I held this portable, I thought to myself, wow, what a chunk. The system isn't overall very wide, but it's pretty thick. I realized that it needs to be able to accept Super Nintendo carts and adapters, so I suppose that it has to be this way. The problem is that when you're playing a game, it can be kind of uncomfortable to hold. The main source of the discomfort is the shoulder buttons. Your two pointer fingers feel like they're out of their element stretching to reach these buttons. The screen is okay, but you have to be looking at it straight on or else it gets very hard to see. And since it's a handheld, it's not always easy to keep the screen facing directly at your eyes all the time. The speakers feel underpowered and the audio comes out fairly weak. The buttons feel a little cheap as if you give them a good workout, they might break on you before too long. I was playing Street Fighter 2 Turbo and as you know, it's fairly button intensive. I had a really difficult time with Ken throwing fireballs and doing dragon punches regularly. Now I know what Joe feels like with his lack of fighting game skills, loser. Remember what I said about the shoulder buttons being uncomfortable? Well, the SNES version relies on these buttons to do the moves and this game really shows how uncomfortable their placement is. The system gets very tall when playing NES games. When you have the adapter in, in an NES game, it's probably a good 10 inches tall. My last real complaint is the compatibility. The system is compatible with most of the games on all of the systems it replicates. But here I tried playing Rad Racer 2 for the NES and it didn't work and I was bummed. Rad Racer 2 is twice as red and I wanted to play it on the go. Alright, enough of the bad stuff, let's talk about the good stuff. It's pretty amazing being able to play games from four different systems on this thing. I think it's really cool having a portable NES and a Super NES. A portable Genesis is cool too, but if you already have a Nomad, then you don't need this thing, unless you want to save a small fortune on batteries. The system has a rechargeable lithium ion battery, which is great, as you won't need to replace batteries when it runs out of juice. Just charge it back up and you're good to go for about 8 hours. It comes with a controller adapter, and if you output the system's AV to a TV, you can play with two-player games with no problem. I really like some of the accessories that you can get, which are sold separately. The Game Boy Advance attachment is great, and it worked without any problems. I like that you can stick this attachment into your real Super Nintendo and play Game Boy Advance games on there as well. I find it strange though that you have to use the AV out on the cartridge adapter and not the SNES. The Genesis adapter can be used on the Super Nintendo as well, but <laughs> that's just silly. Why would any Super Nintendo owner want to play Sega games? Unfortunately, you can't use the NES adapter on the Super Nintendo to play NES games. 
And if you want to get some extra controllers with this thing, you can actually use those on your real Super Nintendo also. Overall, they're okay, and they have the same quality as the buttons on the Retro Duo Portable itself, but they're a bit more comfortable to hold. It's a pretty cool little piece of tech, but it's not perfect. If you like this kind of thing, then by all means, it's a worthy purchase, and I'm sure you'll get many hours of gameplay out of it. And there you go. That was Dave's opinion about the Retro Duo Portable. I guess they, he did bring up some valid points. So. Thanks, Joe. For your honesty, I did bring up some good points, and hopefully they're you know, good enough to help you guys make a decision, along with Joe's points, and if you want to buy this, if you think it's worthy of a purchase or not. Yes, and we hope you enjoyed our look at the Retro Duo Portable mm -hmm. 2.0, I believe. 2.0. And yeah, we've said that multiple times now. And in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. All right, Dave, I think that was pretty good mm -hmm. for our uh, review of a product, um, but yeah. I don't know. Who, who do you think should keep this? Because it's, it's Nintendo stuff, so I actually think it's it's more your thing, because I'm a Sega guy. Well, and... yeah, you're right. I am the Super Nintendo Nintendo guy in general, but since you don't really have a lot of that stuff, you should keep it, because, you know, it's something that you should really what, like. What, 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 I, what am I going to do with it? I, I, well, I, I don't know. It's portable. Lay in bed and play it. I'm, I got to go. All right, it's yours. Joe, no, my game, my game, Joe!